Hey guys, welcome back to Horology Biology. Today on this video, we are gonna strip down and rebuild one of the nicest Enica dress watches I have ever seen, ever. This watch is an absolute stunner. It originates from the 1950s. It has an AR1293 movement inside, 17 jeweled hand winder. It has a champagne dial, which is absolutely beautiful and pristine. The case is in amazing condition. It measures a 36 millimeter excluding the crown so it's perfectly wearable for today's market it is an absolute stunner of an Enica okay guys let's get on with it okay guys let's get on with this strip down of this ridiculously juicy watch So the first thing that we obviously want to do, we need to remove the movement from the case. This case is in such a good condition. It's absolutely ridiculous how good it is. There's a few little scratches on the case back, but considering that it's a plated, gold plated case, it's not gold. Um, the condition is absolutely lovely. I really don't think that this watch has been worn much at all. I really don't. So I'm just undoing the setting lever screw so that I can remove the crown and the winding stem because obviously we need to take the movement out of the case. Now there's two screws that will hold the movement tight in the case which I'm unscrewing now. And then once we've got those out, uh, we can get the movement out. But seriously, 36 millimeter for a watch from this day. It's such a good size. So this movement is actually coming out from the front of the watch. A lot of watches from back in those days used to do this. So there's a little bezel around the crystal and you need to carefully remove that with a knife as I've just done. And then because the dial is so big for the movement, you can release it from the front. But before I take it out, we need to take the hands off anyway, so we may as well just do that now. Protecting that ridiculously glorious dial with some plastic, double-sided plastic I might add, I'm not risking it. And then I'm using hand levers to take out these two beautiful gold-plated hands. Then I'll just move on to the second hand, which, as you're going to see in a second, has a ridiculously long pipe. Look at the length of that thing. You know, when I was removing this, I was thinking, have I got this right or not? Because this doesn't seem to be coming out easily. And then when I saw the length of the pipe, I mean, it's crazy long. So like I said, the movement comes out actually from the front. So you need to remove the bezel and crystal. And now I'm going to remove the dial screws, which are holding this super sexy dial in place. It's pretty straightforward. There's just two screws on the side, one on each side. Uh, you don't have to take them out all the way. I actually do like to take them out. The reason I take them out is because I have a habit or forgetting to tighten them back up and then when I put the whole movement in the cleaning machine the dial screws come out as they will do with vibration and then I have to go and delve into chemicals that I would really not like to delve into so I actually just remove them and then they get washed with all the other screws so that's the dial off and I'm gonna put the crown back in now with the winding stem and tighten that up because we need to make sure that we release any power from the movement before we start stripping it down. It's really important. The last thing you wanna do is leave that and then start removing wheels and bridges and then bang, things start flying everywhere because there's so much power built up in that mainspring. You do not want that thing getting out of control. It'd be like a bull in a china shop, seriously. 
So now that's done, the next thing that I want to do is get rid of that complete balance. The hairspring is the most delicate. The hairspring is the most delicate part on the watch, and it's important if you just to get it out of there. Get rid of it. Get it away from the watch and put it away safely. So I'm just gonna rest it on this cushion case. Flip it upside down, obviously, so there's no stress on it. And then I'll just put that to one side and keep it safe. So now I'm gonna remove the pallet bridge. Just releasing the two screws for this. And that's covering the pallet box. Which clearly just got away from me. So with this video, it's a new thing that I've decided to do is uh, set up different cameras because it can be a little bit boring, obviously, just with the one. So I'm actually using three different cameras now for this and then editing it all together in Final Cut Pro. And I must admit, I've been enjoying doing this. This has actually been a lot of fun. It's been challenging, don't get me wrong, but it's nice to use a piece of software where you can actually get your teeth into and do a lot more things with it. So it's nice to cut in between the different angles and you can see exactly how I'm doing things rather than just a bird's eye view. You know, it's. I think it's a much better approach. So that's the pallets out and the pallet box. And now I'm taking off the ratchet wheel and all the motion works, the crown wheel and the crown wheel core. And there's the click, click's just gone out. And then I'm removing the click spring, making sure that I hold that down with my finger because I do not want it to fly across the room. And they're so small and yes, you will lose them. And I'm just gonna remove the bridge uh, for the barrel. AKA the barrel bridge. And that's held in with three screws. Uh, biggest screws on the movement, other than the uh, movement holder screws, obviously. You just wanna gently ease that up uh, you can use the end of your screwdriver to do that. It's quite straightforward. Just take your time. There's no rush. You know, you'll know when it's come loose and then simply just put it away, take it off with a pair of tweezers and just remove it. So that's the winding stem of the crown out after I've just unscrewed the setting lever screw. And I'm taking out the winding pinion and the sliding pinion. I don't, we don't need those no more, so let's get rid of those too. Saves doing it from when you flip the movement over to the other side anyway, so I usually take it out at this moment. Now I'm gonna tackle the uh, train of wheels. So first remove the bridge and then I can get to the fourth wheel, third wheel, skate wheel, etc. And of course the center one. really gently just pry at this so that you can easily you can easily damage the pivot so you need to be really careful when you remove it just go at it slowly and work your way up so that you know it's come away easily and once it has it will reveal all of the wheels underneath and you need to just gently remove those i'm just taking the barrel out as well I want to get that out of the way the mainspring is inside of that 
and then I flipped the movement over. And what's happened is, is that there were the other two wheels, which I'd not taken out because I didn't want to damage them. They've actually naturally fallen out, which, well, is a good thing, but I've kind of broken my cardinal rule because usually I like to take the cannon pinion out first so that I can get to the center wheel. But as you can see, this movement is different. Because I've decided to work on the uh, movement side rather than the dial side, as you can see now on the video, it's got a really huge plate covering the whole movement top. And if I'm honest, I am a really big fan of this 1293 movement. This date mechanism, it's so simple, but it works so effective. I wish this would have got kept. It actually has an additional gear stuck on top of the owl wheel, which I just removed. Now, I've not seen that before on other Enikers. Luckily, it's in perfect condition because I also don't think I'd be able to find that part easily if there was a problem. And there it is. Now that the cannon pinion has been taken out, the center wheel just naturally falls. Now this wheel, it controls the change of the date. To help it flip over at 12 o'clock, if you've set your hands correctly, of course. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, I'd really appreciate a like on this video. There's a lot of effort putting this together and I'm really happy with the results. Please subscribe to my channel if you can. That also would be really appreciated. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. I am there as horology underscore biology. Uh, all my links are in the description to this video below. So there's setting lever is off. And the minute wheel, we've already taken the hour wheel off. And there's a small intermediate wheel as well. And then we're left with the uh, yoke, the yoke spring. And again, you want to make sure that you support the end of that spring so it doesn't fly across the room. And there's the screw just being removed. Obviously no use anymore at the moment. So now I move on to this fascinating eight wheel mechanism. And the other thing as well, not only is the dial to this watch absolutely phenomenal, the date wheel also, it's not white. It might look white, it's silver in color with black numerals. Again, absolute stunner. Perfect condition. And this plate, it has a little lever for flipping over the date after 12 hours, and then there's a little spring. And underneath it, it has an additional gear which connects to that gear that I was talking about, which is on the hour wheel, and then to another wheel, which helps change over the date at 12 o'clock. It seems very simple compared to other ones that I've worked on and if I'm honest I also found it a lot less fiddly. It was very quick to strip it down because there was minimal parts and also building it back up later on you'll see it was also very quick and I would love it if I was to see uh, date mechanisms like this in other watches but because simplicity on this but it just absolutely works great. So that's all stripped, ready to be cleaned. And now I'm just gonna pop the balance back on. Now uh, we pop it on because it's the safest place to keep it while it's in cleaning. With the hairspring being so delicate and so fine, you do not basically just wanna throw that into your cleaning machine and let it swirl around at so many reps per minute. That would not be cool. So by placing it back in its home on the movement, it's the perfect place to keep it safe. The balance stuff's locked into place within the capsules and it's the safest place for it to be. 
I mean, you could basically just do it by hand, but securing it on the movement is the best option. And last but not least, we need to get this mainspring out. So we crack open the, the barrel and we take off the barrel lid and then that shows us the inside, which consists of the arbor, which has a little hook which connects to the mainspring and then of course the mainspring itself. So the first thing that I want to do is obviously take the arbor out and we need to do that carefully because we don't want to damage it. And once that's out, we can pop it aside and then slowly by keeping pressure on the mainspring, if we just ease part of it out with a screwdriver just to get some leverage so that I can get a finger under there, I can use my thumbs and feed the movement, sorry, feed the mainspring out of the barrel. It's the safest way to do it because there's a hell of a lot of tension on that and you do not want that to hit you in the face or fly across the room or break basically. So that is everything completely done and dusted. The entire movement has been stripped down. Now we move over to the cleaning machine. Parts are all in the basket, all going through the process of being rinsed. And the only thing we now need to do is rebuild the watch. Okay guys, we are back on the rebuild. So we fully stripped down the watch and now we're gonna rebuild it as good as new. So first thing that I'm doing is I'm adding some 1300 to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, I've actually got a brand new mainspring here. So I'm popping this in. The other one, it wasn't in the best condition, so in the end I decided to chuck it. It was more hassle than it was worth, and it had a bit of a nasty kink in it. So in a situation like that, it's always best to just replace it. So I'm putting it on this cool little tool where you can literally put the barrel lid back on and with the arbor inside and you can just snap it in place so it's a snug fit. And it means that you get it connected properly without any kind of hassle. So that's done and I just go and put that to one side. Now I've done it off camera but I've already lubricated the capstones on this. It's not an Inca block system so there's no suspension. You have to basically do it underneath and I did it on the microscope because it was a hell of a lot easier than doing it on video. So the balance is off and it is put to one side. I'm gonna keep that nice and safe until the end. So a little bit of 1300 I'm putting on the center where the center wheel goes and also where the barrel lives and also where the setting lever screw goes. I always do them in the three at the beginning so I can just pop those pieces in and I know that I've lubricated them and I don't need to worry about it later. Pop the barrel in, pop the setting lever screw in and now I can put on the barrel bridge. It's quite a big bridge as you can see and that just fits quite snug. It's not particularly hard to install because you've only pretty much got one hole to do. But what I am doing here is I'm actually checking to see if there's any play between the barrel bridge and the barrel itself. Now, there was none, as you could see. It was perfectly smooth, there was no real play going on. So that's a really good sign that I don't think this watch has been used that much at all. Now that that's in, I can go and install the train of wheels. So the center wheel, the third wheel, uh, also the escape wheel, etc. They're all getting put into place, ready for the train bridge to go on top. These guys just fit in super snug. It's always nice when you're working on a watch, which, how do I say it, not problematic. And this wasn't problematic to start with. It just required a service because it was very dry and it was losing some time. Uh, could have been because of the mainspring probably. So that's the train bridge 
just lining everything up, making sure that everything's seated correctly with the pivots, because one of them is a uh, extra long pivot for the second hand. Check that it's all in place before you screw it down, which I've done, and then move in freely, so that's really good news. And just applying the screws, ready to screw this down securely. And you want to take your time with this, it's not something that you need to rush. Because one mistake, and if you bend a pivot, or you could potentially break one. To be honest, it's probably easier to break one than it is to bend one. And uh, that's a lot of hassle that you just don't want. So I'm also popping in the screws for the uh, balance bridge as well. I just do it all at the same time. Just give it a little check, make sure everything's moving super free, as you can see, so everything's engaging as it should do, and that's perfect. So now I'm gonna oil the jewels, and the escape uh, wheel, it actually has like a little cap on top of it, it's similar to uh, like the shock system. I mean, it's not a shock system, it just has like a cap jewel on top, so you need to unscrew it. I'm giving it a little bit of clean with some pegwood and then just clean that off with some Rodico, just to make sure that it's clean. And I'll put a little drop of oil, which will be 90-10 for this. And then I can just screw that back on once I've oiled it. And that's held together by one tiny, microscopic, ridiculously small screw. And sometimes they can be a bit fiddly because they're so small. So oiling up the rest of the jewels, I'm using 9010. Less is more when it comes to oil. You don't want to overdo it. And I'm using 1300 on the center wheel. Again, just a tiny little amount is enough. You don't need to drown it in this stuff. Yeah, you can actually make it run worse if you drown it rather than use it none at all. So now I'm doing the other side, on the dial side. Again, this is for the escape wheel. It has one on each side. Little bit of pegwood cleaning. Clean it off with some Rodico. And then I will just add a little bit of 9010, just a small dot in the middle, and then screw it back in place. But I must admit, like in all the Anikras that I've worked on, this movement is the its the only time that I've come across working on this movement and it's been a dream. Seriously, I mean, you get some movements, they're an absolute nightmare. Oh man. Seriously, you, you can lose sleep over them. This one has just been so nice, everything's just gone so smooth, no big complications, everything's worked as it should. So I'm just oiling the uh, other side of the jewels uh, using uh, 9010 and then a little 1300, just a little 1300 on the center post. And the cannon pinion will then obviously slide on that later on. So now I can move on to the motions where we can install the crown wheel and the, you know, the crown wheel core, the ratchet wheel. 
also the click and the click spring and they all live together on the barrel bridge using 1300 on the posts and also adding a little bit of 1300 to the top of the arbor where the ratchet wheel will screw into and because it's a two-piece system the crown wheel I add a little 1300 just on the edge of the crown wheel on the inside so then when the core goes into it it just lubricates it as it will spin so I pop the core in and then I can flip this over and put it onto the movement and that's held together with two screws and again it's it's lined up really well because you have a center little post hole and then you can easily line up your two holes for the two screws it's not very complicated at all it's quite self-explanatory they're small screws so you do have to be careful so I don't know if you heard that but I could hear somebody's car alarm going off just now, so uh, I hope it's not mine. So now I'm putting in the uh, click spring. This is a two-handed job. I am not at that stage where I would do it with one hand. Hell no. Best way is to just use a little piece of pegwood. You can secure the end of the spring. Make sure that you just push it in place and it's held in you know, with friction under tension. And then I add the click and I will screw that down in place as well. And that's the clicking noise that you hear, obviously, when you uh, wind your watch, if you didn't know. That all the noise that you hear when you wind it, it's coming from that little tiny piece when it keeps slapping back against the ratchet wheel. So it's basically keeping the ratchet wheel under tension or the mainspring under tension. So now that's in place, I can put in the ratchet wheel, which is the biggest wheel on the top. And it has a square hole, as you can see. So you have to line it up, you can't just pop it on, so to speak, you have to basically... It's like the old kids game, you know, triangle for triangle, square for square. And that's held down with one big screw. And it's cool as well because it covers the rest of the click spring, so that it keeps that in its channel nice and secure. So that can't move around or come out. Ooh, nice shot of my uh, Omega Seamaster there. That's the Lamania based one. Mm, sexy watch. So now I'm using Fixer Drop for uh, pallet forks. And basically, I give them a little wash in this because I will lubricate them. And the Fixer Drop, it basically puts like a microfilm on the end of the forks. So when you add the oil, it doesn't run it keeps it in the place which is really handy because it's it can be quite fiddly trying to apply this oil you know I do it under a microscope so I don't have it on film another thing I was always told by a watchmaker was once you've added the fixer drop use a small piece of softwood and just tap in the pivots so that you remove the fixer drop from the pivots of the pallet forks because that could potentially cause some drag when the watch is under operation and you don't want that so now i just pop in the pallet forks and then in goes the pallet fork bridge on top as i've mentioned in previous videos it's a bridge this time because it's got two screws sometimes there's only one screw so therefore you'd call it a pallet cock and not a bridge so in this instance it's a bridge now 
I'll just place in the two screws to that. You want to make sure that the pivots are definitely lined up correctly before you fully screw it down. So just check it to make sure that you've got the correct movement from it. And then I'm just securing it in place because I don't want it to jump out as I tighten up these screws. Because again, very small privet pivots and you just don't want to break them. So just cleaning off any kind of excess marks that I've made and give it a quick blow to keep everything clean. And what I'm doing here is I'm just, by using a screwdriver on top of the ratchet wheel, I'm just winding the mainspring a little bit. And I'm doing that so that I can show you that they're engaging correctly, as you can see. So as I just tap it, they move from side to side. Now 9415 is the grease that I used to add a small amount of oil to the exit palette. It's the only one that you need to put oil on and I basically apply a little amount and then I tap it backwards and forwards five times and I repeat the process three times in total so that a little bit of oil touches all of the teeth on the escape wheel. So now the movement's been turned over and I just applied a little bit of grease to the center post and I'm putting the uh, cannon pinion on. The cannon pinion I, is already being placed on now as I can see and now it's basically a case of just adding some grease to the winding pinion Before I put it inside, I want to put on the lever. Now this is held down with one screw that I placed originally on the other side of the movement. And it basically keeps um, the winding stem from coming out of the watch. It locks it in place basically. But I like to put it in first because I, as you can see, I have to turn the the movement over on a, on a different side and if I'm adding more things on top they're gonna fall off so in goes the one opinions and now I'm adding some 1300 to the posts where the minute wheel will go and the intermediate wheel and the yoke and all the other parts for the keyless works. I like to just do it all in one go. A little bit of grease on top here as well for where the yoke is gonna sit. Oh, so there's the cannon pinion. I thought I'd already installed it. That just is friction fit, so it just basically snaps on. And then I can put on the minute wheel, and then the intermediate wheel. So when you're changing your hands on the watch, you set in the time, and you turn in the crown, it sends all of this up through these different gears and wheels to the cannon pinion. And of course, your hands are connected to that. So in goes the yoke. And I'm just applying a little bit of grease in between the two because obviously it's a high it's a high friction part. So when you're changing between setting the time or winding the crown and you're pulling the crown in and out, sorry those two pieces of metal are rubbing against each other so you want to make sure that they're lubricated well. You don't need to use loads but you do want to make sure that they're lubricated good enough because the parts will wear at the end of the day and you don't want that. So now I can put in the yoke spring again using a little bit of pegwood to keep it secure and I just slide that in place. 
But then a trick what I do is I, I keep my peg wood holding it down and then I'm putting a little bit of 1300 which I just slide with my oiler between the two, between the yolk spring and the yolk because I want to lubricate that as well and I, I just find it's the easiest way to do it. I'm not saying that my way is right, far from it. I mean, everybody does things differently, but it works for me and my hand's already there, so why not? So that's grease added to the winding stem and then I can pop that in to the watch. Just making sure that the setting lever is all connected correctly. Held down with two screws. And then it has a little arm which connects. So when you're pulling your the crown in and out, it's flipping between it's engaging and flipping between the two settings. So again, you want to make sure that you add grease to that as well, because it is a high friction part. And you can see it's engaging perfectly. Making sure that I clean off any access with some Rodico because you don't want to turn a clean watch into a dirty watch and all that will happen is that grease will just end up getting gunky and you just don't want that. Tiny little bit of 1300 to the cannon pinion before I put the hour wheel on. And that's the extra gear that I was telling you about. It's actually fused to the hour wheel. It's all a one piece. I thought it was separate, but it's, it's really not. So now, finally on this, I can move to this date changing mechanism, which is quite a large plate. And underneath it, it has this little gear which connects to that gear that's on the hour wheel and then on the other side of this one it will connect to the date changing wheel on the movement. As you can tell I'm a really big fan of this date mechanism system. <laughs> it just works so well on this movement. It was so simplistic and so uncomplicated and it wasn't fiddly or anything like that. It was very straightforward and I'm all for that. So little 1300 has been added here, I've added in the lever and the spring for the date change, I'm just screwing this in place, I'm just held in one screw on each. And just a little bit of 1300 here because it's gonna hit against that spring every time every day it's gonna hit so you want to make sure that there's a little bit of lubrication and that's engaging perfectly It's such a beautiful date wheel. Like I mentioned before, it's not white. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's silver. Silver with uh, black numbers, super nice condition. And it's quite a thick uh, material as well. It's, it's, it's not like the, the typical thin ones that you get on the AR1145s or the 1146s. This definitely feels, in my opinion, better quality. And it just fits so snug this plate on top. Simply then just engage the lever into the date wheel. 
and then this whole plate is just held together by two screws and that's it that's it usually i have to mess around with levers and making sure it's engaged correctly no with this it was really that simple as quick as you see it I'm just screwing those in place and making sure that they're nice and tight. And then I add a little bit of 1300 just to the tip of the lever where it meets the teeth on the date wheel. Just add a little dash in there, just on the spike. Again, not too much. And then I wanna give it a quick check, make sure that it's engaging correctly and that it does turn over. And that just snaps perfectly. Very happy with that. Quick set change between eight and midnight. So the only thing we have to do now is add the balance back to the watch. And this watch is virtually finished. Just tap it into place and it already fires up. Now balance cock is held on just with the one screw, one's enough. Most watches only use uh, one screw. Uh, I've seen uh, Seiko's, they use two, I think a lot of the time. Give it a few winds. This is a very, very nice movement. Now overall I'm completely and utterly in love with this watch, I mean the quality of it, the condition. If I had one gripe about it, the only gripe that I have is the crown. It's quite small and it's a bit of an oval shape, so it is it is actually hard to wind if I'm honest. I don't know if just my fingers are a bit fat, but it I find it a little bit difficult to wind because of that. So the only thing now that we need to do is put on this super juicy dial and the hands. The hands also, are, all three of them are in really, really nice condition. So using plastic tweezers carefully, putting on this super juicy dial back onto the watch. Such a unique feature as well with the uh, date at 12 o'clock. For a watch of this age kind of reminds me of the uh, Longines conquest watches of the same era they also a lot of the models had a date at 12 so uh, who copied who i have no idea obviously i wasn't around at that time but that dial come on guys you can't deny it i mean the markings on it mm, damn it's sexy so I'm just putting the uh, dial screws in now. Like I said, I'd already I had taken them out, so I'm having to fit them back in. There's just holes on the side of the watch. I mean, you can't miss them. They're two small screws. Simply pop them in, and then just screw them down. You don't need to screw them down like lock tight, but you just want to make sure that they are secure in the dial. But you don't need to go crazy on them. So now that the dial's on, the only thing that I need to do is set the hands. Now, most important, I want to make sure that I get the date set bang on, so that when I put the hour hand on first at 12 o'clock, I know that it's going to then change within 24 hours to the correct time. So I'm using my Horotec hand punch tool. I like this one a lot, actually, uh, because it has three uh, punches. 
and you've got different dies that you can use so I have it pretty set up that I have a, a large one for the hour I also have a medium sized one and then I use a, a really the finest one and I use that predominantly for the uh, chronograph subdial hands it just fits perfectly on top of them because it's really thin and small but I also use it for the seconds hand uh, on this watch as well because it's like a subdial hand anyway and there it is very simple tool but it's so precise and it's really nice the way it comes down I much prefer doing this than using a hand one I used to use one but you can never be 100% straight when you're going down on it so that's the hands-on and they look absolutely amazing just cleaning off the dial very lightly with some Rodico just in case there's any markings on the buttons and then we can case this watch up and we are virtually there I'll just pop the crown in the movement is in the case like I said it's a top loader one even though you do need to get at it from both sides so I can just pop on the bezel there with the crystal and then the inside of the movement is just held together with two large movement holder screws they just screw in the case and because they've got large heads uh, they just hit against the side of the case so it just completely keeps the movement secure without it going anywhere I can imagine that this watch would look even better if it actually had an open case back I mean, not really a design feature for its age, but nowadays, yes, I think this would look epic with a, uh, an open exhibition case back. So that's the crown in. Make sure the hands are moving, which they are. Job done. Let's put it on the timer graph. And I'm happy with that. I want to give it a little tweak, but 0.6 beat error or microseconds beat error on a watch of this age. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to leave it at plus seven because it's a hand winder so I always like a hand winder to be a little bit faster because as the mainspring goes down in size um, it's nice to have it a little bit quicker and there we have it guys the Eneka 1950s champagne dialed hand winder absolutely stunning guys if you like what I'm doing please subscribe to my channel please like this video it would really help my channel and I would much appreciate it. Guys, until the next one.